Hello everyone and thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and today we're going to be looking at something a bit different, a little bit strange, a little bit wee, a little bit ooh, and this is going to be the uh, the Helixer from Futoon. Um, it's a different, it's a different way of building. That's for sure. It's absolutely a different way of building. And the vape quality is not too bad. But uh, before we go into any more, let's go up close. And I'm going to show you how I build this, how I wick it, and uh, and take you through a whole kind of tour of the moving parts. And I'll try and fast forward through the dull bit. <laughs> not bad, though. Come on, dude. So here we are with the Helixer, um, a little tank going on there from Futoon, you can see that there. Um, and uh, yeah, what does it say here? Inferno. There we go. That's a fun font. And uh, let's have a little look there. Can you read that? You can pause there and look at the stats if you want to see the sizes of all of that good shit as well. And it does have the advanced guillotine deck, which we'll look at in a little while. On the back there, nothing really to get excited about. And uh, on the side there as well. Just telling you pretty much what's in the pack itself. On the bottom, you've got a scratch and sniff with a very cool little hologram kind of affair in there, which is all well and good. Now then, taking that out of there. Unnecessarily large packaging. But uh, there we go. Here is the tank, which we'll look at in a second. And also in here, you do get... Um, a few spares which we will talk about briefly. So in this pack you do get an Allen key to be able to uh, um, do things how you want them. <laughs> Undo and do up the screws and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, and it does also give you a building rod as well. This measures at about 2.75 mil. Um, not sure what that is in inches. Couldn't be asked to look to be honest with you. Not going to lie to you. But uh, I'm going to be using 3 mil for the purposes of today. Uh, you do also get some extra extra screws in there as well. Now in this extra little package of stuff obviously you get a whole bunch of o-rings and all that sort of good stuff but one of the things that i do want to show you and i'm not really sure about the reason for this and i'm not going to lie uh, because i haven't been able to find out anything about it you'll see where these go when we uh, when we take the tank apart now there's two different ones this one is a little bit stiffer than this one and i don't really know they both work uh, um, but I don't really know why uh, why we've got two different materials in there for that. But we'll worry about that in a little while. Now then, this is the tank itself. And I think it looks pretty cool because it looks so different. It, I couldn't figure out if it was looking a bit cheap or if it was something that... Um, let me just turn my phone off. Forgot to turn off the volume, as I always do. There we go. Um... I couldn't decide if it looks like it was something a bit cheap or if it looked really cool. And I must admit, it's it's kind of different look has grown on me quite a lot. It really, really has. So, uh, yeah, this is the look. Obviously, up the top here, we've got the tank section. Down here, we can see the, uh, the air hole going into the side of the deck. We've got an engraved kind of logo going on there. Underneath, nothing to get excited about at all. We do have what I think is a gold-plated 510 screw going on there as well. Now then, we've got these notches at the bottom. The notch on the far left is when you want to remove the deck, which I'll show you shortly. The middle notch is with this air hole fully open. And this uh, the, the notch on the right there is with the air hole closed. So if we turn this around, I'm, oh, I was rather hoping you'd be able to see this, and I can't think of a way of being able to show this happening unless... Let me see if I can be uh, if, if I can do something useful. I doubt it, like, but okay. Now, is this going to show? Kind of, you can kind of see that. No, you can't. That doesn't help at all. No, nope, sorry about that. Couldn't help you. Anyway. So yeah, I was unable to really sort of be able to show you the air going through here and how it closes off, but um, you'll get the grip of that when we take this bad boy apart. So. First off, let's take this top section apart. Um, you unscrew the drip tip. That's all fine and dandy. It's got these cool little green O-rings going on the base there, but also um, the clear O-ring around the top. This gives you access to the fill holes. You've got those four fill holes, which are okay. Could be doing with a little bit larger, I think. Uh, predominantly, if you're using bottles like this with this kind of nib, um, I prefer it to be a sort of a, a bit of a larger hole, but that's a personal preference thing. Now, you can then unscrew this top section 
Now this comes out and you do have an o-ring in there as well so they really have gone hell for leather on making sure this bad boy doesn't leak which is absolutely fine. Now the glass here is removable as well if you can get to uh, get to grips with it um, which does help with cleaning massively. Now then can I help? Can I get can I get it out? Can I get it out? Yes, I can. There we go. So uh, yeah, you can uh, remove the glass and really get to clean underneath there if you so want to. Now this is one of the things we're going to be seeing when we've got the airflow, which I showed you a little while ago. When that is in the full open position, so in that middle notch between those two, you'll see the four holes at the bottom are open. Now if I try and turn that airflow now trying to get hold of it so I can turn it without uh, without everything going wobbly. You can see that those holes are starting to close up. They're closing, they're closing, they're closing. And that is with the notch moved around to the far right as opposed to the middle. So you can see now how your juice flow is directly related to the, uh, the airflow holes, which in my opinion is a bit of a, a, a rough idea. And I'll tell you why in a little while. But um, if we take it around all the way around to the left little notch, we can separate the deck, which is certainly an interesting one here. Um, we can also take this insulator out. Everything fits re re pretty damn well. And obviously all of the uh, O-rings and all that sort of stuff, they have gone mental on O-rings, um, which does help it stop leaking, but it also means that everything moves pretty smoothly if a tad tight. Now, this is a section where those two pieces that I told you were different materials, um, they'll both sit on top of here. Um, and I imagine you've got a spare because this can kind of wear out over time because it's getting constantly pressed against the metal base um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've not I've not had a sort of requirement to change that out at all. And the holes are all the same size. So it's not like the stronger material has a smaller hole in here for your air or anything like that. So I don't really I don't really grasp it, to be honest with you. Now, you've got your airflow holes here. Now, what happens is with this very exciting deck that we've got here, we've got a different way of building, which I'll show you in a second. But uh, this is going to go on here and it goes on only one way. That's not going to move around there. It doesn't go on that way. So you have to have that air hole directly in front of the coil or where you're going to be placing the coil. That's just how it is. Um, and then that sort of sticks in there quite nicely. And so that means that when you do put it back into the uh, into the jobby wobby up there, that sort of clicks in place and then you can move everything around as you see fit. Now then, let's get a coil in here, shall we? Because it is going to be a, a slightly different build. Now you can see that you have got four holes in a velocity style, but they're not very big. These holes could be doing with uh, being a tad on the larger side. Now what they've done here, which I think is interesting, is the width on these posts is pretty big but they actually kind of machine this central one in. Um, so that is somewhat thinner. I don't know if that is what's governed the uh, the size of the hole there, but, uh, but there you go. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the requirement was of bringing that in, to be honest with you, but there we go, that happens. Um, uh, what we've got here is we do have this uh, the insulator for the positive pin, and that's about it. There's nothing really else I can show you there. Um, you've got 1.3 or 1.2 mil holes on your grub screws, which make it nice and easy to undo. And like I say, those post holes, they're certainly not the biggest. Now, I have been rocking Claptons in this mainly. However, uh, for today's build, I'm going to just put in a simple round wire build because that's what a lot of people are still rocking. So... And that's what we're going to go for. So what I'll do is I will do a kind of a sped up build section so you can see how I build it, what I build it with, and uh, and uh, away we go. Right, let's get into it, shall we? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so that's the uh, the coils in there. I've just got to fire those bad boys up there. Now, uh, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit so you can see exactly what's going on. Um, they are a little bit of a sod to get in because especially with those top holes, you can't really get your clippers in there to really kind of um, clip those off. So um, you give them a little bit of a wobble and as long as you've got things tightened up nicely, then they'll usually break off. But uh, yeah, that's a bit annoying. And that's because you've got this top section here, which is where the wick is going going to go shortly which is uh yeah which is a little bit strange anyway let's get this bad boy ready for wicking okay so we've got the uh two uh the dual coils going on in there now and i have done nine wraps of 24 gauge stainless steel on each they're not the tidiest they're not the prettiest but they will do the trick for what we need today that's coming through a 0.27 at the moment but obviously i've just fired them up so that is going to come down a little bit more now then when it comes to your wicking um now oh, first of all i think that uh, three mil coils are absolutely ideal and obviously they give you the 2.75 i wouldn't go down to 2.5 or any smaller than that and the reason for that is because the amount of wick that's going to come out of there does have to fill these top holes nice and comfortably now one of the things i never really understood is why you have these uh, sections at the bottom there with holes i don't really get what the point of those is but uh, but there you go unless i'm missing something absolutely integral to the <laughs> to the makeup of this tank anyway let's get on with uh, getting some wick in and i'll show you uh, how i go about installing that <laughs> Right, so once you've cut your strips of uh, of cotton or whichever wicking material you're going to need, um, I've tried various different ones, um, including cotton, bacon and various other things. To be honest with you, I'm perfectly happy with just using Muji in this respect. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give that a twist as we do normally. However, I'm also going to give the other end a little bit of a twist as well. And that's going to help us once we've installed these bad boy coils. So you've got to have some kind of uh, um, confidence that uh, you've cut the right amount of wick off. But you can do the, the second twist later if you so wish. So here we go. This is the install of this particular wick on here. Now we're going to pull that through. I've got stuff everywhere. Here. Stuff everywhere. Okay, so there we go. We've got a little bit of resistance going on there, but nothing massive. And the same on this one. Pull that through. Like so. Now we still want these uh, these pointy ends going on on the ends of your wicks. And the reason for that is you can get the pointy end and you can get that in the hole and pull it up. Now once you've done this, one of the things you do want to do is make sure that these sections are not pulled super tight because um, the, wick, the, 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 the wick does obviously have to suck down the juice still. So we want to sort of remain keeping that fluffy wherever we can. Now then, when you do go to cut the top, I wouldn't try and get too flush, but just sort of flush-ish. So there is a tiny amount poking through the top there. I did have a bit of an issue when I cut them too flush before. And um, when doing that, the, uh, the, 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 the issue happened where um, as soon as I put the top on, it kind of pushed one of the wicks out. And that meant that as soon as I put juice in the tank itself, they, uh, it fell through which which was uh, no good to anyone so yeah so make sure that you've got a little bit of fluffiness in there but everyone's a winner now then juice wise what we're going to use what we're going to use let's use uh, one of these bottles that i was told you about earlier on this is the peeled and sliced from o'malley's diner sort of an apple kind of a vibe going on here pop in a little bit of juice on top of all of the wicks itself 
Right, and once that's done, you've got a couple of options on how you install this. You can either take this section out and pop it on top of what you've got already. That does mean that you can uh, make sure that uh, everything is sit seating correctly. And also, once you push that top section down, it doesn't uh, move any of your coils or any of your, more importantly, your wicking out of the way. So um, until you get used to it, that's something that I'd suggest doing. I'd also suggest just putting, <clears throat> excuse me, just popping a little dab of juice around that top o-ring section so that moves nice and freely when we get it onto the tank and then we can pop the tank on here i'm going to match up the th the first of the three joeys with that one like so we're going to unscrew that from the uh, coil tester that doesn't need to be there anymore going to move that to the open position so the air is open and you can see on the top there that we do have you see that one there that's all a little bit deformed so we've got to take that out again move that out get this section out Now pop a little bit of juice on this green section as well, just so it does spin nice and easily. And there we go, that's much better. So you can see a little bit of the green in there, but uh, you can also see that we've got full access to all of the wicks, no problems whatsoever. So pop the glass back on the top there. Give it a little push in so that clicks into place. Tighten up the top section. Like so. You can see that filling this with this with one of these bottles is a little bit laborious because it does take a little bit extra time but we get there eventually that's the main thing screw on the top and away you go now with those air holes open if you do have any leaking straight away then it's going to show you that you have uh, that you have um, moved that kind of top section or one of the wicks away from the top section but uh, but that's it Right, now based on all of that, let's go up top and we'll have a vape on it. Okay, so that was the up close with the Futoon Helixer. Now I've got it on top of the Q-Class Mini here and I think it does look pretty sweet. Um, it's definitely got that kind of, uh, was there a, was there kind of like a movement, you know, like deco and all that sort of stuff, but or art deco and stuff, but was there a thing for kind of 70s American space aliens, that kind of vibe, you know what I mean? Um, that's what this sort of thing reminds me of. It's got that kind of look to it. And, and personally, it really has kind of grown on me. But uh, and anyway, those coils that we put in there, they're reading at 0.23 at the minute. I have just fired this so, so um, it may be a tad lower. Now, like I said, that was nine wraps of 24 gauge. I've got windy pops. Stainless steel 316L. And um, it was coming out just over the 0.2 mark, and that was over a 3 mil bit. As I said in the up close, it comes with a 2.75 mil bit, uh, which is whatever that is in, uh, in old money. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a treat. Anyway, let's have a little vape, shall we? Cloud-wise, it definitely produces. Let's see if we can give you another one. And this is at 55 watts. Which is not bad. It's not bad at all. Now, I believe, I think that this was kind of designed, designed more for a flavour chaser than a cloud chaser. I don't know. Because but putting the uh, coil in, you don't have a great deal of space to put in some big monster coils. Like I said, I've been using um, dual core, my, my normal 26 gauge dual core Claptons with um, 30, 35, 36 gauge canthered on the outside and then flattening them. And they've been going in here no problems at all. But I don't think you'd get much larger than that in here to be honest with you um 
Now, the, uh, the vape quality from it, the airflow is obviously hitting the coils directly and then going up that central chimney, which is lovely. Um, and so the flavor is certainly not too bad at all. The biggest issue with this, and I fed this back to, uh, to the, 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 the company the moment they sent it to me, it's coming direct from the manufacturer. Um, it's the fact that if you close the air down, it's going to close your juice flow as well. And, you know, obviously some people are going to want a reasonably tight air. Now, if I take that down to... It, it's not really mouth to lung territory. Well, you can... Yeah, it's kind of a real loose mouth to lung. So you can kind of do that, but... Um, but it is going to restrict that juice flow. So if you're using a high VG juice, then uh, obviously the smaller those, because you're using four juice holes, just those four juice holes, um, because you're reducing those sizes, it's going to mean it's going to it's a lot tougher to wick. Now I'd certainly found that wicking is key with one of these because if you get the wicking wrong, if you get the wicking too tight on those holes at the top there, then um, it just is a pain in the dick and it will not wick adequately. If you get it too loose, then juice is going to flow through past those uh, past those wicks, and it's just going to flood. So getting that on point is absolutely essential. It really is. I don't think this tank is very forgiving for someone who, uh, who who kind of just bungs a wick in and forgets about it. You know, you do have to be aware of it. Um, like I said, the flavour is not bad. The flavour is not bad at all. Um, I think because uh, of the length of the chimney after the coils, I think that's possibly where you may lose a little bit of it. But uh, but yeah. Um, but it's 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 enjoyable. It's something different. It's enjoyable. Um, if you build it correctly, it'll perform. If you don't build it correctly, it won't perform. And it's as simple as that. That's one of those, uh, it's one of those things. I say, I think it's a pretty unforgiving tank. The biggest sort of thumbs down moment um, for me, or the biggest negative on this, is that juice flow, airflow control thing. Um, it would be lovely if they had a little kind of a widget on the side that you could sort out your juice flow with rather than, uh, rather than anything else. Um, and it would also look kind of cool. I mean, if you can imagine having, uh, just got to lift my arm up, um, where those rings are, um, if you had a sort of one of those rings was a juice flow control, I think that would work really, really well. Or if they change the shape of the uh, of the holes at the top, I think that would be beneficial as well. But uh, like I say, I did feedback to them and they said that they're going to be looking into it. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. Now then, price-wise, I don't know if anyone in the UK has them. Oh, yes, they do. Um, there is a company called naturevape.co.uk. I've not used them, so I don't know what they're like. But um, they are selling these at $29.99. And you, they're also selling a 5mm glass extension tube uh, for $4.99. How does that work? How does that work? Uh, it won't let me find out. It won't let me find out. Um, well, that's weird. If, it, if you've got a... What? Because you'd need a whole cage thing and all sorts of things. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't got one. Don't know. Anyway. Um... As it stands, it is what it is. It's a bit funky, it's a bit different, it's a bit fiddly. Once you get it right, you can get a pretty decent vape from it. Uh, under 30 quid, it's not a bad little tank at all. Um, now then, the uh, it does hold, how much does it hold? Three mil, three mil without that extension, um, I think. Does it hold three mil? Oh God, should have looked at this beforehand. Should have looked at this beforehand. Didn't look at it at all. Didn't look at it, didn't think about it. Well, I would say that it holds around about the three mil mark. Um, I can't see it holding much more than that, to be honest with you. So that's a, there you go, rope. <laughs> Do you come here for professionalism? Do you? <laughs> sucks to be you. <laughs> but there you go. Anyway, if you get it right, it's great. If you don't, it's it's fiddly. That's about it, ladies and gentlemen. For the money, I think it's a bit of fun. It's a little bit different. Does it do anything different to sort of a lot of other RTAs? No, not really. It, it, in as much as does it perform differently to, to some other RT, RDTAs or, you know, RTAs? No, I mean, it's a decent, it's a decent vape quality if you like the look of it. 
treat yourself. Why the hell not? Right. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Dean the Vaping Biker. Don't forget that uh, Evolution Vaping are still offering the 10% discount on the Q Mini. If you want one, go and check out my last vlog if that was uh, if that floats your boat. But otherwise, the, the promo code's Biker. That's it. Keeping it easy. But uh, yeah, so if you want to get some money off a of Q Mini, then uh, they're absolutely cracking as well. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. I'm in large!